Well, greetings, Macintosh High School, class of 2025. My name is Dr. Dan Lane, and I'm honored to serve as the principal of Macintosh High School, and I look forward to supporting you over the next four years. I know that starting high school can be a daunting task and a little bit scary, so hopefully this presentation will help calm your fears and give you information that you need to be a successful Macintosh chief when you join us in the fall. I would like to say at the outset, however, that we are here to support you. If questions arise during this process, please feel free to speak up and ask those questions. You'll find out that you have staff that have been assigned to you based on your last name that are there to support you and to answer those questions. So please feel free to reach out to either your administrator or your counselor or even myself if questions arise that we can answer. If you need to get in touch with me, my email address is lane.daniel at mail.fcboe.org. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our registrar and assistant principal, Ms. Amy Hammock, as well as our lead counselor, Ms. Leanne Belknap, for their hard work in creating this presentation for you today. Without further ado, let's get into the presentation so that you will find what you need to know to be successful as a Macintosh chief. First of all, I would like to introduce you to our administrative staff. You'll notice that our administrative staff is divided among our student body by last name. So you will see the administrator that has been assigned to support you based on your last name. Mr. Othaman is administrative support. He serves a dual role. He's, at, he's our county athletic director, but he also works at McIntosh as administrative support, and he supports students whose last names are A through C. Mr. Dan Lackley supports students HU through MOH, and his primary responsibility is that of being our testing coordinator. Ms. Amy Hammock, as I mentioned before, is our registrar, and she supports students whose last names are M-O-N through R. Mr. Keith Haber is our 504 coordinator, and he supports students whose last names are D through HT. And Mr. Leon Hammond serves as our athletic director, and he serves our students who are um, last names S through Z. We also have five counselors that are um, assigned to support you through this process and throughout your tenure as a Macintosh chief. Ms. Laura Wilkes supports students A through C, Ms. Benita Cochran, students D through HT, Ms. Jennifer Wooden, students HU through MOH, Ms. Leanne Belknap, who is also our lead counselor, MON through R, and Ms. Courtney Spradlin, who is um, for students S through Z. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, feel free to reach out to any of these individuals. They will be happy to support you. At this time, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Ms. Amy Hammock, who will give you more information about the registration process. And again, I look forward to meeting you in person and welcome to McIntosh High School. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Dr. Lay mentioned, my name is Amy Hammock, and I am one of the assistant principals and the registrar at McIntosh High School. Um, and I wanted to go over our um, goals uh, for this meeting. Um, I want to be sure that um, all of our rising ninth graders understand uh, graduation requirements needed in order to graduate from McIntosh High School. Um, Ms. Belknap, uh, our lead counselor, will also uh, be joining us. Ms. Belknap, would you like to go ahead and show yourself again? Hi, everyone. I'm Leanne Belknap, and I'm the lead counselor at McIntosh High School. And so Ms. Belknap is going to um, help walk us through the, um, the high school curriculum and some of our elective and pathway options. And then uh, we'll both help with registration procedures. So we are going to head and getting started. I would like to talk to you about the differences and the similarities between middle school and high school counseling programs. As high school counselors, we do offer the same services as the middle school counselors. We provide classroom and individual advisement. We facilitate small groups and meet individually with students to offer academic, 
career, and social emotional support. We host informational meetings specific to grade levels, schedule conferences, and provide referrals for counseling and tutoring services. We provide classroom lessons and resources to increase exposure to post-secondary options. As high school students, we are going, as your students come to the high school, we are going to promote and encourage that they take responsibility and advocate for themselves. We want students to meet with their teachers and email them with any questions and feel free to come into our office to ask for support. For the graduation requirements at high school, students must accumulate 23 credits or Carnegie units in order to graduate. Of course, these credits must be earned in specific areas. Each semester is 0.5 credits, which equals one credit at the end of the year. Students will take four years or four credits of math, science, and English. They will take three years or credits of social studies, and they must have a semester of health and a semester of PE. In addition, they must earn a total of seven elective credits. Out of those seven elective credits, students must take elect three electives in either the CTE or fine arts or world language areas in order to meet graduation requirements. All right, when earning credits, one of the things that we need to bear in mind is that at the high school level, we have semester courses and two uh, semester courses make up the full year. So grades are determined and credit is awarded at the end of each semester. So that is different than what happens at the middle school. Uh, so when you finalize, uh, when we finalize a grade for the semester, uh, the students must have a 70, which is a passing score or higher in order to receive credit uh, to meet those 23 graduation requirements. Unlike the middle school, we do not average first semester and second semester grades to, together. They stand alone. Um, the other thing about earning uh, credits is that um, Credits are needed in order for promotion to the next grade level, not just for high school graduation, as Ms. Uh, Beltnap mentioned. So other things to think about with earning credits and why we want to be successful in all of our courses is that credits, um, you need 5.5 units uh, or credits to move from the ninth to the 10th grade. So, uh, and then you can see here on the screen to go from 10th to 11th grade, you need to earn, you know, an additional six more credits to get 11.5 credits. And then in order to be promoted to the 12th grade, you have to have a total of 17 credits. So there's also um, promotions, uh, grade level promotions uh, that are tied to earning credits besides just what's needed for graduation. For transcripts, students in high school begin earning a transcript or have grades posted to a transcript at the end of first semester after ninth grade. The transcript is a record of all classes that are taken and all grades earned, whether they pass the class or fail the class. The transcript will have a record of those grades. The quality point GPA is reported on the transcript using a 4.0 scale. Students will earn one bonus quality point for AP classes and 0.5 bonus quality points for dual enrollment classes. Class rank is reported using the percentile and this is based on the weighted quality point GPA. The HOPE Scholarship is available to students who graduate from a Georgia high school and attend a Georgia college. In order to qualify for the HOPE Scholarship, a student must have a HOPE GPA of 3.0 and have four rigor courses by the time they graduate. Most students will have three rigor courses because they will take a second year of a world language, 
In the junior year, they'll have their math, which is normally Algebra 2, and then their senior level math. All of those are courses of rigor. In order to earn additional courses of rigor, students may decide to take chemistry, physics, forensics, anatomy, microbiology, accelerated math courses, AP, or dual enrollment courses. The Zell Miller Scholarship also requires four courses of rigor, but the HOPE GPA must be a 3.7 or higher, and the student has to have a qualifying score on their SAT or ACT. For the SAT, they need to earn a 1200 or higher, and on the ACT, they need to earn a 26 or higher. The difference between the HOPE Scholarship and the Zell Miller is the amount of money that the state pays toward tuition. For the HOPE Scholarship, it pays a portion, anywhere between 80 to 85%, and that can fluctuate. But with the Zell Miller, the um, state pays for 100% of the tuition. And this is for Georgia public universities. They pay a different amount of money if a student attends a private college. For more information about the HOPE Scholarship and to locate your HOPE GPA, students will need to create an account on the Georgia Futures website. Some of you may already be familiar about um, exams and end of course tests because you are, you've taken them first semester and you may be in a, a course in eighth grade that is a high school course like physical science uh, and accelerated algebra uh, one geometry A. So courses at the high school have final exams uh, or an EOC at the end of the semester. Final exams are developed by the teacher. Um, they are worth 20% of the semester average uh, at the high school level. And at the high school level, something that's different than what is at the middle school, there are um, exemptions that can be given. So for, um, for the exemption uh, for academics, students can exempt up to three exams on academics. Um, and in the past, we've done an exemption for attendance. This year was a different um, type of exemption. We did a, just a general exemption if the student had um, a 70 uh, or above. Um, for EOCs and AP classes, students may not exempt first semester exams in a course uh, first semester with an EOC or AP exam that they would have uh, in April of the second semester. Um, this year, the milestones at the high school level are going to be in biology for ninth graders and algebra one for ninth graders, including the Excel algebra one geometry A, and then for 11th graders, American Lit and US history, but that doesn't concern ninth graders right now. Um, and generally those uh, EOCs have counted for 20% of the grade, but the state has changed that and wavered that. So the, the, um, the assessment um, uh, calculation will be a little bit different this year. Um, pathways. Pathways are something that are that would be also different at the um, high school level versus what we see at the middle school. Uh, whereas for a um, a student, pathways um, are are good um, things to have on your transcript because they show a progression of rigor uh, on a student's transcript, and that you are you know sticking to something that you're really interested in, and that you're leveling um, up through a particular area, a content area, a particular. Um, you know, career area or um, through fine arts or world language. So just a, a brief mention about some of our pathways. So in career tech education, um, we have quite a few, and Ms. Belknap will talk about some of those pathways in just a little bit, but we have quite a few CTE um, focused um, pathways, and you would need to have three courses in that pathway. Um, a lot of our students um, at McIntosh do advanced academic pathways uh, where they are getting credits in a designated area, all four that you would need to graduate, as Ms. Belknap talked about. Um, they go ahead and take two years of a language, and they would need to take one AP course, and that would give you an advanced academic pathway. Um, in fine arts, students who are interested in theater or visual arts um, or music can take three courses of the same program in fine arts, and that would 
be a fine arts pathway. And then finally, three years of the same world language would be a world language pathway. And there's a lot more information on our website about pathways and examples of them. And we even have a, a great video about electives and pathways. Okay, I would like to review what a typical ninth grade schedule looks like. So students will of course have their English course. It will be ninth grade literature. They may be in gifted courses or they may be in the regular course. Biology as well, you have the option of taking the gifted course or the regular course. Of course, if you are in, a, in the gifted program, uh, that's, that would give you the opportunity to take the gifted course and that is a decision we'll talk a, a little bit more about later. For math, students will take algebra unless they are on the accelerated track and then they will need their help in PE and a total of three more electives. This adds up to seven classes and that's a typical schedule for the ninth grade. To review the English courses that we offer and those required for graduation, you will note that we have in the ninth grade again, students must take their ninth grade literature, either the gifted option or the regular option. As a 10th grader, they will go into 10th grade literature, again, a gifted or regular option. In junior and senior year, you have a few more options available. As a junior, you are required to take American literature, but you do have the option if you qualify to take AP Lang, or you may want to enroll and be a dual enrollment student. For your senior English, you will take British literature or you may decide to take AP literature, a dual enrollment class, or we also offer a dramatic writing class. We have some English electives that you may choose from to add into your um, schedule, and those are debate, journalism, which includes yearbook and newspaper, and mythology. All right, um, for math, as we mentioned before, you're required to have four units of math to graduate from high school. And so at Macintosh, we have quite a few math tracks um, and those really do kind of begin in the middle school. So um, I know that's a lot to look at, but um, if you are in um, our, uh, like in eighth grade math, for example, um, currently, then you would be most likely going on to algebra one in ninth grade. And so that algebra one uh, would then um, would lead to in 10th grade geometry, for example. And then in 11th grade, you would take algebra two. And then in 12th grade, your math teacher would make a recommendation for you at that point on whether you should be taking pre-calculus or statistical reasoning. So that's just a, a typical track that kind of is determined by what you're taking right now in eighth grade. Your math teacher, at, in eighth grade has made a recommendation for you for math and that is visible on your academic plan and we're going to talk about that in just a little bit um, but I wanted to Miss Belka and I wanted to kind of have you see what the tracks are for math just so you can see what the progression would be so you know some of you who are in accelerated one right now that's technically our, our track three and four. So if you're at Accelerator One, you actually have um, some different options. And again, that's a, a high school course. So that comes with a little bit of a different um, how you wanna accept the credit or how you wanna move on into, into um, ninth grade. Um, we have to kind of make those decisions here in the spring once you are completing those courses. So as I mentioned, it, students who are in Math Eight would typically go on to Algebra 1 in ninth grade. In Algebra, if you are um, in Algebra 1 right now, you would go on to Excel um, 1 in ninth grade. Um, if you're in Accelerated 1, Al or Accelerated Algebra 1 Geometry, then you may progress to the second Excel course, which is Excel Geometry Algebra 2, and that was that track four that I was mentioning or you may decide to repeat accelerated algebra one geometry. And that's certainly an option. And that would keep you in, let me go back. Um, oh, wrong way. 
that would put you into that track three. So tracks are just a way to make sure that you're moving through the curriculum um, and that you are, you know, progressing and you're, you know, you're building foundational knowledge, uh, but that you're also meeting requirements for graduation. We also offer some um, help options. Uh, math, our math department is so good, like many of our departments, about giving tutorials before and after school. Uh, we are an open campus in the morning, so a lot of our students come in uh, at eight o'clock and they go and see a teacher for help if it's needed. And then we also provide um, an Algebra One support for ninth graders who need um, additional support in algebra. In science, we have um, just two basic tracks. Um, one thing to mention is that all ninth graders go into biology and Ms. Belk Knapp mentioned earlier that that could be a gifted or a chemistry or a gifted or a regular option if you are eligible for gifted biology. Um, if you are um, in um, biology, your teacher will make a recommendation for your second um, science course in 10th grade and that could be, as you can see on the screen, physical science or chemistry. And chemistry, we also, as Ms. Belknap mentioned, have a regular and a gifted option if you have, if you're eligible for gifted. Um, in 11th grade, our 11th graders move on uh, from physical science into chemistry or into environmental science. Our chemistry students move on to physics or the replacement for physics, which is AP Physics 1. That's a college level uh, course. Um, of physics, the content is similar to physics, but it's um, a little bit that we bump up the rigor for that AP course. And then in 12th grade, we can see that we have lots of options for our, our 12th grade in, um, in our science um, department. So we offer um, so many APs, AP Biology, AP Chemistry, AP Environmental Science, um, and the pre prerequisite for those would be uh, Biology and Chemistry. Uh, we also offer AP Physics 1. If you had gone from physics and you want to take um, some uh, more rigorous physics, you could go from physics to AP Physics 1. We also offer AP Physics 2, AP Physics C. Um, we have courses of rigor. Ms. Belknap mentioned courses of rigor. She mentioned forensic science, anatomy, and microbiology. Um, biology and chemistry is, biology is required. Chemistry is strongly recommended. Um, if you had not taken physics already, that's certainly an elective option uh, in 12th grade, chemistry, environmental science, and oceanography. And that's currently what we're offering uh, to our 12th graders who have to have four units of science to graduate. Students only need three units for social studies in order to graduate. And ninth graders do not take a social studies class unless they have qualified and decided to take AP Human Geography, however, that is considered a social studies elective. In order to earn your social studies units to graduate, students will begin that in the 10th grade by taking World History or AP World History. As a junior, you will take US History, or again, you have the option of taking the AP. And as a senior, you will take a semester of government and a semester of economics. And again, you have the option to take those as AP courses. We have numerous history electives that students can take and add into their schedule. Um, so I mentioned earlier the AP Human Geography that is available for ninth and 10th grade students. And then we have some other options that are available um, along the way. Uh, in 10th through 12th grade, and those include individual um, and ethics and the law, AP art history, AP European history, AP psychology. We also have a regular psychology and sociology class. Again, those are each semester classes. We have a U.S. history and film, and then we offer our seniors a current issues elective. For the career and technical education, we had mentioned earlier that we would encourage students to earn a pathway in this area. Um, this is also a great way for students to explore maybe um, a, a future career. You know, if they're thinking that um, they already know perhaps they would like to be an engineer or maybe they have an interest and want to learn more about it, then we would encourage them to try to take the engineering pathway. So we have several different pathways that students can choose from. 
we have animation and digital media, audio, video, film, computer science, engineering and technology, financial services, which is a business path, graphic design, uh, marketing, food and nutrition. And I'm gonna come back to the healthcare because the healthcare, if students take that their first and second year, by the third year, they have the option to be a dual enrollment student through Southern Crescent Technical College where they can choose from um, various programs like patient care, emergency medical responder, emergency medical technician, phlebotomy. And then we do also offer a third year of allied health, which is still considered a Macintosh course. Students may also decide to incorporate world languages into their schedule. Um, students may choose to take a world language. However, I want to point out that a world language is not required for graduation. It is definitely required if you are planning to attend a college after high school and you would need to have two years of the same world language. We offer four languages. We offer French, German, Latin, and Spanish. And you will be able to see that we offer the AP French and we offer AP Spanish. Students, as Ms. Hammock mentioned earlier, can earn an academic pathway um, when they take two years of a language and then incorporate an AP course in one of their core academic areas either in English, math, science, or social studies. Again, this would earn them an academic pathway. Students have numerous opportunities to earn pathways in various areas. All right, so I'm just gonna just kind of recap a little bit because that was a lot of information um, before we continue and I talked to you about um, the registration steps. So one thing I do want to just mention, all of these things that Ms. Belknap and I have talked about related to our the credits and our pathways and our, um, you know, the core things that are required for graduation. You also have another great expert in your building, and that is Dr. McDermott. And so I know that you are working with Dr. McDermott um, during your literacy time on um, looking at your individual graduation plan and the academic plan. So she's an excellent resource in your building, so is Ms. Ivy, about some things that, you know, questions that you might have um, about high school um, electives, high school pathways, um, and credits for graduation. I'm gonna finish up this section and I just wanna mention some helpful uh, tips for uh, parents. Um, you wanna make sure that you stay informed um, we have a, a really great website, and I'm going to point out a couple of things, Ms. Belknap, um, and I will point out a couple of things on our website. Um, we um, send a newsletter um, home through um, email and our Infinite Campus Parent Portal um, every Thursday about what's going on. We put a lot of information in there, maybe about testing that's coming up, or the counseling office will put in some, some great reminders about what's, what they're seeing in the counseling office or scholarship opportunities. Um, you want to be sure that you're um, using your Schoology access to um, check on your, your students' work in Schoology for updates and assignments. Um, be sure to look at Infinite Campus. Um, we obviously put our grades there, and you might are pretty familiar with Infinite Campus, using the parent portal with grades and attendance. Um, be sure that your email address is updated because that's how we share a lot of notifications through our email address, um, our, our database on emails. Um, every Friday, um, we would send out notifications about missing and failed work from the week. We call that our failure notification messaging system. And so we use Infinite Campus to do that. So that's another way to kind of get a reminder um, once a week about things that students may be missing um, in Infinite Campus in their classes or have failed in, um, in Infinite Campus. Um, attend informational meetings. That's why you would want to check the, the Chief Connection newsletter and then in, um, your email for upcoming informational meetings that help you um, stay involved and know what's going on at McIntosh High School. Encourage your child to get involved in high school clubs and activities. We have so many uh, clubs and sports and activities uh, where a, a student can get involved and, you know, um, 
be with other students and um, just you know see a different side of Macintosh other than uh, classes every day. Um, email teachers as soon as you have concerns. If you see something in Infinite Campus or you see something in Schoology, uh, you get a notification about a missing assignment. Email teachers as soon as you have concerns. And of course, as Ms. Belknap can attest, our school counselors at the high school, just like at the middle school, are excellent resources to contact if you need to um, uh, schedule a teacher conference or just to kind of share some concerns. That can be a, a great uh, part of our, our team. All right, so I want to point out some steps on how you're going to be registering for your courses for the upcoming school year. Again, I mentioned that the um, website, our Macintosh website is an excellent resource. Uh, on the website, you would go to student resources and there is a, um, a curricula, um, curriculum drop down. Um, it says curriculum eighth grade transition now, so it kind of stands out. So you click there and then we have our videos and we'll have this video and um, information elective videos, handouts, um, such a great place for you to uh, kind, of, kind of look around in that site um, and see what's out there uh, related to uh, our curriculum and our um, scheduling process. Um, the next few steps that you're gonna be doing in the registration process, um, as I mentioned, your um, math teacher and world language, if you're in Spanish one or French one, have, have already made recommendations for uh, courses for you for next year, and those are visible in your academic plan. Um, the, after that, if you take a look at your class recommendations, I'm sure that you have uh, in your academic plan with Dr. McDermott. The next step is to um, determine if you want to do any courses that require an application or audition. So our STEM um, program for um, our students at McIntosh High School begins in the ninth grade. And so I know you probably have already received information about our STEM program. That's an application program. It requires you to fill out an application and complete some work on your own and then have some teacher recommendations. Um, as um, Ms. Belknap mentioned earlier, um, a social studies that students can take in ninth grade is AP Human Geography. Well, you'll want to see Ms. Ivy or Dr. McDermott for um, the qualification information and registration for an AP Human Geography course that you could take in ninth grade. Um, they uh, believe I've already sent out information about um, AP Human Geography. If you are interested in newspaper or yearbook, I know that you might be doing your book maybe as a, um, a club at the middle school. Um, Ms. Belknap mentioned that as a class, an elective through our English department. Um, that requires an application. And so uh, we'll have information about how you apply for journalism um, through an application when um, our counselors come over and, and speak to you here in the next week. Uh, band and orchestra also would have an audition process uh, that level is determined by the high school instructor. They work very closely with your middle school instructors. So if you're interested in continuing in band or orchestra, make sure that you speak to our um, high school and your middle school instructors uh, about placement for next year. If you're interested in chorus, um, our students are um, begin in a beginning chorus, a beginning women's chorus or an intermediate men's chorus. Um, our art students begin in visual arts, which is an introductory course, and our theater students begin in drama one. But band and orchestra require um, an audition process so that we get the right placement for you. If you are interested um, in a weight training course in the ninth grade, um, especially if you're gonna be doing a, um, a, a sport in the fall and the spring as a ninth grader, um, then you'll wanna reach out to Lee Belknap, <laughs> um, not Leanne Belknap, yes, they are married. Um, Lee Belknap is our, um, our department chair for the um, uh, personal, um, for the PE department, and um, he would want to know some information from you if you were interested in being placed in the ninth grade weight training class. So those are some application and audition courses. Um, what you're going to be doing um, perhaps now with Dr. McDermott, and especially when our counselors um, visit uh, during literacy period here in the next week, is to be making elective and alternate requests. We're going to be using the academic planner for that. And so you have to understand that you're making requests um, to be uh, for electives 
to be put into your, your schedule for next school year, we're gonna make sure that you're getting into your core classes. And the four core classes in ninth grade, science is biology, your math, your PE and health, uh, and your English. So those, we're gonna make sure that you get those classes because they're part of what you need to graduate. However, your electives that you are requesting may you may not get in. So we have to make sure we have alternates as backups. Um, and so that process, like I said, is done through the academic planner. Um, and so our, uh, Dr. McDermott and our counselors will have some instructions for you. Uh, those instructions are available right now on our Macintosh website and even a, a video. You can listen to me again uh, about how to use the academic planner. The portal for making those recommendations will close when our counselors are finished working with you on March the 12th. The last thing that you're going to see related to registration is I will send out a student plan um, through Miss Ivy and through Dr. McDermott that's going to list all of your course requests and if you are in AP, if you've asked to be an AP Human Geography, an AP Acceptance Agreement form. So that's going to come out in April. So that'll be kind of a, another check to make sure that we um, have the, your academic plan as you'd like to see it. So this is what your academic plan looks like. I'm sure that you are already have seen this and are familiar with it. Um, it shows four years laid out what I want you to make sure that you're concentrating on uh, for, for um, making an academic plan for next year, of course, is what ninth grade will be like. So that's in that first column. Um, you certainly want to look at your four years. Uh, that's a part of your individual graduation plan. And I know Dr. McDermott is working on you, working with you on that. Um, so take a look through the four years, but really make sure that next year, ninth grade is uh, in that first column is how it you know, needs to be. You've got your core classes and then the electives that you're requesting to take. So to do that, you would use the drop downs in the in this elective place. You would click in the in the field and then select what electives you'd like to take. You want to be sure, though, that you take uh, and select the A and the B side of the course. So you can see here for if you were in the uh, going into the 10th grade, you would want the mythology A and B because remember at the high school, we schedule for the full year, but we have semester courses. So the A side of the course and the B side of the course. So you want to make sure that that 0.5 and 0.5 equals one. Okay, because remember credits help us graduate from high school and get promoted to the next grade level. So be sure that you do both. Uh, the A and the B semester. And then you may have already seen this, but at the bottom of your academic plan are places where you put your alternates. Uh, one of the things to mention about your alternates is that you want to put them in order of preference. So if you really want to be, as this is listed here in this example, in financial literacy, it needs to be at the top of uh, your alternates. It's your top list. Use the arrows to uh, move your alternates in order of your preference. You need to select four to six alternates because as I mentioned before, your electives are requests and you may not get into your first request. So we need to make sure we have um, in our academic plan alternates that you would not mind taking if your first, second or third choice elective would not be available. As Ms. Hammock mentioned before, the high school counselors are going to go over to Booth and we are going to be excited to meet with the Booth students to get them ready to come over to the high school by checking to make sure that um, they have uh, all of their electives and their alternates selected or to answer any questions that they may have. So parents, if you have some questions, you, send, you can certainly send them um, by your student to ask us and we'll be happy to answer them. Um, but we're going to be at Booth during the week of March 8th. And we will go to each team um, individually so that we can meet with all of the students. Um, and you'll see the schedule, of course, on the screen. This will happen during the literacy time. So we will be uh, meeting with each of the students in their classroom setting, um, with the exception of Thursday for those students who are on Team 8D, um, that will be a virtual meeting. And we will meet with them via Zoom so that they too will have the opportunity to ask any questions um, that they may have as we are reviewing their um, academic plan and making sure again that they have their three electives chosen, both the A and B side of each course and um, anywhere from four to six alternate classes. Now in preparation for the meetings um, that we're going to have, 
Um, we definitely encourage that you watch the electives video that we have linked to this presentation. The electives video um, is going to introduce you really to all of the electives that we offer here at McIntosh. You'll actually get to hear from the teachers themselves and maybe even a few students about what those classes um, entail so that you really know what it is that you're signing up for. As you prepare for the meetings that we're going to hold, um, you know, parents and students, you'll want to have a discussion about um, your academic plan. Again, you want to look at those recommended courses that your middle school teachers made for you as far as your academics. And you may want to consider a couple of things. So you may want to talk about whether or not um, you need to um, stay in the gifted English or biology that they recommended, or if you need to come out of that gifted English or biology. Again, you have that choice. You may also want to um, talk about whether or not you need to make a change to a recommended course. And you definitely want to have a discussion and begin thinking, even though it's not quite time to make that decision, but you want to have a discussion um, about whether or not you're going to accept high school credit for some middle school courses that you took, either in math or science or world language. And Ms. Hammock's going to explain a little bit more um, later on in this presentation about the benefits um, or perhaps um, the things to consider when making the decision to accept high school credit. Okay, and I'd like to talk a little bit more about the gifted courses. In order to um, take gifted courses in ninth and 10th grade, um, you obviously must qualify as a gifted student. We offer gifted English and science again in the ninth and 10th grades. Students can choose whether or not they want to take gifted courses and those can fluctuate each year if they, if they um, make that choice. We do not offer any honor courses, um, but we do have accelerated math and as we've mentioned earlier, we do offer advanced placement or AP classes. If you are not in the gifted program, but you feel that that is something that you would like to um, explore a little bit more about or actually be tested to see if you would qualify, please contact Dr. McDermott at the middle school um, to get that process started. For gifted courses, um, students must maintain an 80% in those gifted courses or at least a 70% in their AP or accelerated math classes in order to remain eligible. If these grades are not maintained, a student will be put on probation. They have a semester to meet the um, continuation requirements or they may be withdrawn from those gifted courses. So it is important to keep those grades up in order to have that um, option to, of course, remain in your gifted classes. If, um, as a parent, you do want to change the gifted placement that was recommended for your student based in, um, after you've looked in the academic plan, you will need to complete the course waiver that is located on the Macintosh website. And so let me just say a few more things about the course waiver request. As Ms. Belknap just mentioned, um, you, it's found on our website in that uh, student resources tab, curriculum and eighth grade transition. And there is a Google form um, that's open for a parent to complete. It's called the course waiver request. We formally call that the insist form or insist process. So if you've had students come through Macintosh, you may have, have heard it call, been called an insist. The course waiver request just lets us know that um, number one, you would like to change the gifted placement for your child, or um, if a math, if your math teacher recommended you um, for a, um, a math placement in ninth grade, and you would like to, to um, change that, then you would complete the course waiver request for math, math support, uh, reading support if it's listed, and as I mentioned, the accelerated math. Um, we don't do our course waiver requests or insist for AP courses. Um, so for example, the AP Human Geography course, it's a qualification, a pre-qualification. So you have to qualify so that we can ensure um, that you are, we're setting you up for the, the most success in an AP course. So there's, um, you don't, 
aren't able, able to complete a waiver for an AP course. Um, we also don't do our course waivers for application or audition courses. You would just need to go and complete the application and go through the audition process. Um, and as I mentioned, just like with an AP, if you've not met the prerequisites or qualifications, then you wouldn't be allowed to um, um, be allowed or approved for the course waiver request if you don't meet the qualifications or prerequisites. Uh, it's found on our website. Um, once you complete it, which you can start completing it now, and some, some people have, um, as you go through the registration with um, Dr. McDermott and our counselors, um, please just give us some time uh, to um, update the academic plan, um, three to five business days, if you would, and then you can go back to the um, academic plan to confirm that the requested change has been made. Like I said, that course waiver request is found on our website. So the last thing to talk about, and thank you so much for your attention and um, throughout this um, whole presentation, the last thing I want to mention is um, about the high school credit for middle school courses. So some of you are in um, Accelerated One Geometry A, a math course. That's a high school course being taught um, for potentially high school credit uh, or in a physical science course. That's a high school physical science course. Um, and you may be in Spanish one or French one, the high school Spanish one or French one at the high at the middle school level because you're looking to go into Spanish two or French two in ninth grade. So there are some um, benefits of, of accepting credit or um, declining credit. There's definitely some things to consider. And so um, Ms. Beltnap and I tried to capture all of that right here. Of course, you may have more questions and certainly you would reach out to us, but Dr. McDermott and Ms. Ivy would also be um, excellent resources at the middle school. For Accelerated Algebra One Geometry A, the idea is that you're taking that um, accelerate a course in eighth grade so that you have room in your schedule for more rigorous courses, including uh, AP math. Um, if you accept the credit, you may not repeat accelerated algebra one geometry A at the high school level. So if you accept the credit, you can't go back into that course. You will go on to accelerated geometry B algebra two if you accept the credit. At the high school with transcripts, you are not able to repeat classes for which you already have credit on your transcript. Uh, this will earn you, however, one high school math credit, one down to be able to um, have what you need for graduation. The grade that you accept the credit for is calculated into your GPA, but not for the HOPE GPA. So if you earned a 92, at the end of um, the year in Accelerated One Geometry A and you accept the credit, that grade is going to be a high school grade now for you and you're already starting your high school GPA by taking that um, credit from the eighth grade, the course that you took in eighth grade. If you decline the credit for Accelerated Algebra One Geometry A, which you can do, you are allowed to repeat Accelerated Algebra One Geometry A in the ninth grade. So this is one where even though you sat through the course, um, there are the math procedures, our district math procedures do allow you to repeat that course and maybe uh, you were missing some things from the content you were learning because math, like some of our courses, it's such an important foundation that you're gaining. Uh, you are allowed to repeat that if you um, decline the credit. Your eighth grade math teacher, as we've mentioned several times um, uh, in this presentation, has made his or her recommendation for what they believe you should be do doing in the um, ninth grade with your, your math course. That's um, visible on your academic plan. Physical science. If you are taking physical science right now in the eighth grade, high school physical science, you're taking that because you are wanting to take make room in your schedule to take um, more rigorous science coursework in the 11th and 12th grade, including AP science. If you accept the credit, you may not repeat physical science as, as if you accepted the credit for the um, accelerated one math class. You may not repeat physical science. It will earn you one high school credit for graduation. And um, as I mentioned earlier, Students are required to graduate with a physical science or a physics. So that will take care of that 
particular requirement for graduation. Now, most of our students who take physical science in the eighth grade are doing it in order to take more rigorous coursework at the high school. So most students who do take the credit for physical science, they do take physics or AP physics in the 11th grade. Um, but you have already earned one of your high school science credits if you accept physical science credit from the eighth grade, but you may not repeat physical science. Again, the grade is calculated into your GPA, but not for HOPE GPA. Different for science than with math, if you take physical science in the eighth grade, whether or not you take the credit, you may not repeat physical science again. So if you um, do not take the credit, then you will be in a track for your high school science courses. You will take biology in ninth grade, chemistry in the um, 10th grade, physics, because physics is one of those requirements for graduation and your fourth year science. So there are some decisions to make, um, and you may not be ready to make those decisions right now. Um, Dr. McDermott, and you'll get information from Ms. Ivy um, at the end of the year about what to um, accept credit for, decline credit for, um, and physical science is one of those ones that you need to understand that you cannot repeat physical science if you're in physical science right now. It's just how you earn if you decide to earn the credit or not, accept the credit for your transcript. That's the difference. Um, and then finally in Spanish one, French one, if you're currently taking that, the same as math and science, you're doing that to take more uh, rigorous coursework at the high school level. So you're looking to take um, AP Spanish or AP French uh, here at McIntosh High School. If you accept the credit, as with math and science, you may not repeat Spanish one or French one again. Um, it earns you the, a one high school world language credit. Um, so you're doing that because you want more, um, you know, to be in the, in the world languages pathway so that you would start perhaps, um, you would start in um, ninth grade with your um, French two or Spanish two, and that would be two years of a world language that a lot of colleges and universities like to see on a high school transcript, and you would still have room to take um, the third levels and even up into the AP um, classes by accepting credit for your Spanish one or French one that you're taking right now in eighth grade. The calculated grade is in the um, GPA, but not for HOPE. If you do not take credit for the Spanish one or French one that you're sitting in right now, you may not repeat Spanish one or French one. Um, we would encourage you to take a different world language and you would start at level one in the ninth grade. And so you'd start perhaps in German one or Latin one uh, at McIntosh High School. And that you would continue your languages um, starting new uh, at the high school level for, um, for your college um, pathway and for your college, or for, excuse me, for your high school pathway and your um, um, high school elective course offerings. Thank you for, for your attention to this presentation. We know it's a lot of information and it can be very overwhelming. However, you have contacts at both the middle and the high school now to help answer any questions that you may have. On behalf of the McIntosh administration and the counseling department, we would like to welcome the class of 2025 to McIntosh. <laughs>